Hi, my name is Nicholas Soros, and today I'll be explaining how to properly set up, balance, and use the Glidecam V8. It's a great piece of equipment. I want to make sure you know how to use it and balance it properly. The first step to setting up your Glidecam is to have a nice, sturdy light stand. You're going to need a light stand in order to place the Glidecam onto so that you can balance it properly. Once you set up your light stand and get it to an appropriate height, you'll then want to mount your glide cam holding arm. You can mount the glide cam straight to the light stand, however it's much preferred to use the support arm in order to do proper balancing to keep it away from the pole of the light stand when doing your drop test. Once you mount and tighten the support arm on, you want to take out the main pole and gimbal system of the glide cam. This is the main part that makes the glide cam work properly and gets balanced so that it can flow freely as you move with it. You'll take the handle and slide it into the pole sticking up out of the support arm. Then tighten down the little screw next to the handle in order to secure it in place. You want to mount the glide cam so that it's in line with one of the legs of the light stand. If it's in between a set of legs, it could very easily tip over and fall over, hitting somebody or breaking and damaging the gear or camera. Next, you'll take the easy release plate off and secure it to your camera. Now where you place the easy release plate on the camera is going to affect the way that you balance the actual glide cam. So I recommend that you mount the tripod easy release plate in a way that when mounted to the glide cam, the camera will be directly over the main pole of the glide cam. When mounting your camera, you're going to do a first layer of balancing here. If the camera is too far back on the sled, the glide cam will lean backwards. If the camera is too forward on the sled, the glide cam will lean forward. So leave the easy release plate tightening screw loose so that you can slide the camera forward and back until you get it to a point where the glide cam pole is nearly vertical. This will get you a first set of balancing out of the way. Once you find a good position for the easy release plate on the sled, where it appears to be as balanced as possible at that point, tighten down the screws for the easy release plate to ensure that your camera doesn't slide around anymore on top of the sled, disturbing and interrupting the balancing act you'll be doing later. Now if you mount your camera and the camera is too heavy, the glide cam will want to flip upside down completely. This is telling you that it is top heavy you'll need to either add additional weights to the bottom of the glide cam or extend the telescoping arm. Now, you will be doing more fine-tuned balancing with this later. Just get it to a point where your camera wants to stay up in the air and isn't top heavy. On the sled, you should find eight golden screws. Now, on our model, we only have seven golden screws. Somebody misplaced it a long time ago. Please keep track of these golden screws. If another one is lost, it could compromise the usability of the entire glide cam. Now, to do fine tune balancing on the glide cam, you'll need to loosen all seven of these golden screws on the edges and the bottom. You'll then use the small Allen key to do your fine-tuned adjustments. This Allen key can be found inside the little toolbox provided in your glide cam kit. On the back and side of your glide cam, you'll find two screw holes that the Allen key will fit into. When doing your fine-tuned adjustments, turning the Allen key clockwise will push the sled away from you, while turning the Allen key counterclockwise will pull the sled towards you. You'll use this Allen key to do micro adjustments on the balance of the whole glide cam. If you see it leaning to the side a bit, you want to go to 
the side hole and turn the Allen key to either pull or push the sled in the direction you wish to rebalance it in. Think about it as pushing or pulling the sled into the vertical position. So if it's leaning away from you, you turn counterclockwise to pull the sled up into the vertical position. If from where you're standing looking at the hole, the glide cam is leaning forward and away from you, that's when you turn counterclockwise to pull it towards you. If it's leaning back towards you, you want to turn clockwise to push the sled away from you and up into the vertical and balanced position. That is the end goal. The goal is to get it in this perfect balanced vertical position where it wants to just stay straight up and down, not tilting left or right or forward and back. Now there is no balancing bubble, so all this is done off of your eye and off of letting it come to a resting position. If you're in a windy area that can disrupt the balancing act itself, you need to get the glide cam to a resting position to be able to see which way it wishes to lean after it is at a place where it looks like it doesn't want to move anymore. It's sitting there vertically. It's not tilting left or right or forward or back. Tighten down all your golden screws, all seven of them, very lightly. Tightening them down with too much movement abrasion could slide the sled around in there and screw up all the micro adjustments that you did. Sometimes these micro adjustments can come down to literally quarter or eighth turns of your Allen key. So you just gotta play around with it. It's a lot of guessing and checking. Typically, I like to take it and push the glide cam until it's past the balance point and then pull it back slowly until it reaches that point where it's neither leaning one way or the other. Once you get the glide cam balanced for your camera to be sitting in the vertical position, you'll now do what's called the drop test. 